Hello, my friends. Today I am going to be starting the Believeathon, which is Believeathon 2 Journey to the Stronghold. Now, this Believeathon was started by How to Train Your Gavin, and he made an amazing compendium. I was meant to print off and download that compendium, then my printer bust because it is a piece of crap. And then, obviously, we're not exactly in the best situation to be buying new printers right now. So I am screwed. So I'm just going to read it all out to you on my laptop. And I am going to do the journey. So those of you that follow my channel will know that I don't actually have a set TBR for Believeathon. Because what I am going to do is because this is my first readathon that follows a journey or a quest or an adventure or anything like that. This is my first one. I decided to go in blind because I know that Gavin has a map. I will put the map here and you start at the bottom and you work your way up choosing your own path as you go. And what I didn't want to do was choose a path based on what the prompts were because I feel like that takes the fun out of it. I wanted to choose a path and then see what adventures and challenges I came up against as I went along. So I decided to go in blind. I have no idea what any of the prompts actually are. I have no idea what any of the paths mean. I just know I have to get from the bottom to the top. Now, I don't know a path. I'm looking at the map right now. I cannot tell you what I'm going to do. Just wait for that to settle. I have not officially decided on a path. So we are going to be going on this journey together and I'm going to make decisions. So the first thing I have to do is do the Questers Pledge. So I, I, I don't know how to do this. So I'm going to I'm going to be like America. Just I, the seeker of adventure, do solemnly swear on the noble art of magic that I will abide by the laws of the land and that I will always be truthful and wary upon my quest and that I do not use my magic for personal gain but to advance peace and prosperity to the inhabitants of the land of make believe the fun. Normally would feel stupid, but I am taking the journey of a child and I'm really enjoying it. So, information. It's a two-week readathon. Don't know if I'm going to take two weeks. Quite honestly, I'm really in the mood to just get through these. I've read some quite heavy-hitting books recently and I think this middle-grade journey is what I need. So I can definitely see myself doing this fairly quickly, but I'll see how I do. In order to complete your quest, you must visit five locations, including the Poacher's Pocket Inn, and complete, and complete five reading prompts. However, if you do not wish to read five books in two weeks, then fear not. A mysterious stranger will provide you with a magic lamp upon completing the prompt at your starting location. You have three wishes to choose from, but you can only choose one wish to help you on your journey. Oh, I didn't know any of this. This is cool. You will discover what the wishes are later. Oh, Gavin, I love you. You've put so much effort into this. So, oh, so the journey has begun. I am now at, oh my God, is this going to work? Let's see. There we go. The Poacher's Pocket Inn. <laughs> I'm so excited. As you enjoy a pint of speckled pig at the Poacher's Pocket Inn, you notice a shift in the atmosphere. The clouds darken outside. You look outside the window to see a dark figure approaching the inn. He spots you through the window and makes haste to the door. The wind howls as he opens the door and marches directly to your table. You lower the pint of speckled pig as he lowers himself into the seat opposite you. He knows your name. Before you have a chance to reply, he begins to recount your incredible adventures of the November before. He has heard all about your incredible skills traversing the land of make believe -thon. I did not do make believe -thon, But I will pretend I did, just for this. Oh, I've lost where I am. Oh, yeah. Now, he needs your help. An evil witch has placed a curse on the bookkeeper stronghold in the far north. Because of this curse, books have become trapped to everyone but you. Oh, Oh, the disaster. I mean, yay for me, I get books. So people in the land of make believe are beginning to lose their imaginations. Oh no. 
you are the only person with the courage and strength to embark on this quest. If you agree to embark on this quest, you must read the first book in a series. Once read, you may choose your next path. You can only choose a location that is directly above your current location or diagonally next to your current location until you reach the bookkeeper's stronghold. Ooh! Okay, right, I have to pause there because now I have to choose a book. A book that is the first book in a series. This is exciting! Wait, what am I going to choose? I didn't think about this bit. Help! I don't know if any of these would count as middle grade. I mean, I'm assuming Game of Thrones would not. But Percy Jackson could. I mean, I feel like The Hobbit would, but I've read The Hobbit. Uh, Numbers and Nemesis, I definitely think would class as middle grade because they're a bit of a toss up between middle grade and YA. Ooh, I have so much choice. I mean, of course I have Harry Potter, but I feel like that's quite a cliche way to go. <gasps> Series of unfortunate events, that'd be amazing. Right, I think what I have to do instead is journey to my James Patterson shelf because all of these I kind of have plans for in the future and I don't want to start them yet. So let's go to James Patterson. Here we are. Did you like that amazing transition I just did? Okay, so first book in the series we have House of Robots. Oh, Treasure Hunters, that could be cool. Uh, any down here? No, no, not really. Then they're, they're more adult. Give thank you a try is not the first. It is a sequel. <gasps> Middle school. Oh, that could be real. Oh, I don't. Oh, do I have the first one? It's, it's just my rotten look at the first middle school. I really feel as though I need to know this information. Daniel X is a middle grade. I know that. Maximum Ride. Is that a middle grade? I think it is, but you have to start with When the Wind Blows and that is not a middle grade. <gasps> I've got it. I have got it. Does this work? Let me see. J Whoops. Jackie Ha Ha. This is definitely a middle grade. It is definitely the first in a series. And it was recently gifted to me by Brooke from Brooks Books, who is a fantastic friend who is going to kill me if I do not read this book soon. So, let's embark on this journey. Yes, And here is the gift note from Brooke. Enjoy. That's that's not even the right gift. It's from the Fall of Crazy House. That's not Jackie Ha Ha. Well, damn it. I'm going to have to switch them around. Whoopsie. Take two. Enjoy your gift from Brooke. Liam's name. Use Liam's account. You thief. Believe the fun's about rediscovering your childhood. I'm doing it. I'm really, no one understands how excited I am right now. Like this, I have been waiting for this readathon since, since I first heard of it, which I don't know when that was. But honestly, I've been so looking forward to this and the fact that it's here now, I'm just really looking forward to it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, bloody hell, it's the first page. Okay, let's see where we go. I just realized I haven't actually told you about what this book is. So Jackie Ha Ha is a book about a young girl that deals with the problems in her life that basically a child doesn't want to have to deal with. She deals with them all through making people laugh and being the funniest person in the room. And I'm just going to read the synopsis in the back because I feel as though that's going to do a lot better of a job explaining what this book is than I ever can. With a name like Jackie Ha Ha, that's what I was born to do. You could say I'm an expert on wisecracks, pranks, gags, and anything else that brings all the chuckles. But this story is about more than just being funny. Sometimes when I'm cracking jokes, I'm just trying to forget that my mum's serving in the war far away. Or that my dad's hardly ever home, leaving me and my six sisters alone a lot. And let's not forget how my awful stutter pops out at the worst possible time. But despite all that, I promise I'll still make you laugh. Or my name isn't Jackie Ha Ha. 
So, I'm like eight chapters off being halfway through. Like, I'm not too far off being halfway through. And I actually thought when I first picked up this book that I was just going to get through it quickly because it's a middle grade book and I'd just speed through. But I found that I'm actually really wanting to take it slow. I'm loving all of the illustrations. I'm sorry, I feel as though that's all I'm going to say throughout this. I'm loving all of the illustrations. I think the story is amazing. The fact that they uh, the fact that this book is dealing with a parent going away to war an absent parent who is pretty much neglecting his children by not coming home dealing with bullying and dealing with up to now the potential of the fact that a parent might be having an affair dealing with increased responsibility of a child having to take care of their siblings there is a lot going on here and I'm finding it really, really interesting. They're also dealing with race. Racism is a not a big thing, but it's appeared in a couple of chapters of this book. And I just, I'm amazed. Like, I know I read a lot of YA. I don't read a lot of middle grade. And I am actually amazed by the type of content that is in this book and the issues it's dealing with. Because as you have... As you'll know, if you've watched my channel, I didn't really start reading until I was 13 and I dove right into YA books. So I missed out all of this portion of my life when it comes to reading books. So catching up with it now, I am, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm shooketh. I really am. And I am just loving every moment of it. So I'm making sure to take it slow and really savour every single second. So I will check in with you when I get a bit further on. I'm just about to go for my tea. So I'll check in with you before I go to bed tonight. So Jackie's just said she isn't sure if she has a crush on someone. But she said, he does have very nice hazel eyes. And he's sweet and funny too. He's also friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean and reverent. No. Wait, that's the Boy Scouts. So I've got 88 pages left of this, and then I've officially finished book one of Believathon. And I will get to leave the poacher's pocket in, and I'm really excited to move on to the next one. I don't know what the paths are. I think it's been like a day since I picked this book, but I am super, super looking forward to actually getting in to the rest of the story so as soon as I finish this I will continue on with my journey to the stronghold and decide what path I want to take next so I've literally just this second finished Jackie Haha. -ha. wow <laughs> I cannot even say anything other than wow this was a great story I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to be talking about it quite a lot. It will be in my mental health thon, it will be in believe thon and it will be in my wrap up. So I don't want to talk about it in all of them so I'm just going to give you a very brief quickie of my feelings and then I'll talk about it mainly in my wrap up. Um, that was a fantastic story. I do feel as though I missed out reading middle grade books and I'm so glad that I get to do that now <sighs> that took me through all of the feels it took me through laughter and heartbreak and it dealt with so many serious situations and I'm just I'm shocked that it actually does that but wow so yeah that's all I can say wow now it's time for me to leave the poacher's pocket in and move on on my journey so let's see where I go so here I am I have finished the first book in a series, which means I can now leave the, where are we? The poacher's pocket in. So it says, once read, you may choose your next path. You can only choose a location that is directly above your current location or diagonally next to your current location until you reach the bookkeeper's stronghold. But before you set off, the stranger thanks you with a magic lamp the lamp can grant three wishes at any point in your journey, but you can only choose one. So one, skip one location on your path. Two, transport to a different next location on the map. Three, whoops, <laughs> three, transport to the bookkeeper stronghold. And it's nice to know I have them. I'm hopefully not gonna use any of them. I don't want to use any of them. You're ready for your next adventure. 
And now you must pick your next location and stick to the path set before you unless you use one wish from the magic lamp. Be sure to choose your wish wisely. Oh, which location do you want to travel to? Where do we want to go? So currently I am here at the Poacher's Pocket Inn. I can now go to Baba Yaga's house, the Wonder Falls, or the Yellow Brick Road. Ooh, which one do I fancy? Okay, I don't like the look of Baba Yaga's house. That looks creepy as hell. So I'm going to immediately rule out Baba Yaga's house. So do I want to go to the Wonder Falls, or do I want to go to the Yellow Brick Road? I assume the Wonder Falls is from that book Wonder. I don't really know anything about it, but I really... I've watched the film. I really love that film, actually. I do want to read that book. Oh, the Yellow Brick Road, which is obviously from The Wizard of Oz. Ooh, where do I want to go? I feel like I need help. Hmm. I think I'm going to go the Yellow Brick Road. I like The Wizard of Oz. I'm going to... I'm going to go for the Yellow Brick Road. I feel like if I pick the Wonder Falls, it'll be something to do with disability or mental health related. And I'm reading a lot of mental health related books. I want to try to steer away from that. So, I'm going to the Yellow Brick Road. So I've just chosen the yellow brick road, which means I need to turn to page 10, which is the next one. I can't turn, it's on my laptop, but no matter. Oh, the yellow brick road. As you're following the yellow brick road, you come across the Wicked Witch of the West. <gasps> she enchants poppies around the path and causes you to fall into a deep slumber, one you fear you may never wake from. I mean, I could really do with that, to be honest. Let's be real. In order to wake from your slumber and vanquish the Wicked Witch, you must read one book you were supposed to read years ago. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm going to assume this is a book I haven't read yet. So, okay. Uh, so I can't do any of the ones. I feel like I'm going to end up going to my James Patterson shelf again. Because James Patterson, but I'm, I'm really close to the camera, sorry. Uh, so... I feel as though I'm going to end up really close to my James Patterson shelf again because James Patterson is the only, like, middle grade books that I haven't actually read because I, I think Numbers and Nemesis were both classed as middle grade. They're kind of like in the in-between between middle grade and YA. Um, and I've read both of them. Uh, what else? Percy Jackson, is that middle grade or is that YA? Either way, I've read it, so I wasn't meant to read it years ago. I've read The Hobbit now, so that can't count. And I don't think why I don't think Lord of the Rings are middle grade. I think they're much for an older audience than The Hobbit was. I could read Harry Potter. No, I've read Harry Potter, so that doesn't count, does it? I could do the series of unfortunate events, but I'd have plans for them. My God, this is difficult. Narnia. I've read Narnia. I forgot to. Yeah, right. James Patterson shelf. James Patterson shelf. Let's go. The stressful thing is, Maximum Ride would be perfect for this because I was meant to read it so long ago and I never did. Uh, but I'd have to start with When the Wind Blows, and that is not a middle grade book. So, it looks like I'm going to end up turning to Middle School or Daniel X. I feel as though I was meant to read Middle School a long time ago. But, I don't have the first book in the Middle School series. I don't think that's necessary, but still. I feel as though the point still stands. Um, this is tricky. I feel like people that take part in this should have a good stock of middle grade books, and I just, I just, I just don't. So, what are we going to go with, Connor? Do we go with the dangerous days of Daniel? Oh, it's not even pointing upwards. Sorry. Uh, do we go with the dangerous days of Daniel X, or do we go with a middle school book, which is any of these? I funny, but again, I don't have the first one, so that's stressful. What do I go with? I feel like a middle school book's a good option, but there is also a good chance middle school is going to come up later on in this reading vlog, because this is pretty much my knowledge of James Patterson's middle grade books and any other middle grade books I've already read, so maybe I could read one of them another time. Uh... I'm going to be back in a minute. I'm going to just check up that Daniel X is a middle grade book. 
So it turns out Daniel X is actually classed as a YA book, but everyone that's read it said really it is more of a middle grade than a YA. So I'm going to class it as allowed and I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to read The Dangerous Days of... Oh, the flash isn't on. Right, so I'm going to read The Dangerous Days of Daniel X, which will be quite interesting and I'm looking forward to it. I've just checked it has a lot of bad reviews, so I'm scared. Daniel X works alone. Having watched from the shadows as the events of the brutal murder of his own parents unfolded before him, he has been forced to make his own way in a dark and unforgiving world with a heavy task handed to him. Daniel's father was an alien hunter, working his way through fearsome wanted list of aliens, intent on seeking control and wreaking devastation. But, as he planned his next target, his own time was running out. Following his parents' sudden deaths, Daniel faces an uncertain future. He knows little about his family or where he came from, but a few things are clear. He has inherited the list from his father, and with it, a unique ability to create anything that he needs, including some very devoted friends to help him along the way. His life has become dedicated to the mission. Each day is transformed into a terrifying hunt, watching each step he takes, for danger awaits around every corner and lurks within the shadows. His ultimate aim is to exact revenge against the number one on his list, his parents' murderer. But first, he must target the others, each more sinister and gruesome than the last. Now I'm feeling it. I'm excited. I'm gonna get started. I am rather unsure about how I feel about this book. I am only on page 15, and the story is okay, but I feel like the writing is just making me want to hit my head against a wall. For starters, there is a monster thing, an alien creature thingy, and he's just found Daniel, who is three years old at this current time, and he's just said, Game over, you pathetic little puke meister. Like, I know this book's written for young people, but blimey, jeez. Puke meister. Puke meister. For starters, an alien wouldn't say that. And for second, a human wouldn't say that. That's just disturbing. So naturally, I am here to talk about a book. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. It's really weird. Like, it's James Patterson, so obviously I love it because it's James Patterson. But it's not what I expected. Like, I don't really know what I expected. Like, I knew it was about a lad who was an alien hunter. But it's just written in such a way that I'm kind of sat here like, really? This is James Patterson? It doesn't feel like James Patterson. And I know all of the stories aren't him. Obviously, he co-wrote this one with Michael Ledwig, so there's a good chance that Michael Ledwig was the person that did a lot of the uh, writing for this. It's it's just weird. It's not bad. That's the thing. It's not bad. It's just strange. Well, it's not what I expected. I didn't really have many expectations, to be honest, but it's definitely it's not what I expected. Um... But I, because I never really read into this, I've just found out Daniel is a young lad that can basically create things out of thin air, like down to like basically the nitty gritty of it. He he can control atoms and molecules and create them into something. Like he can adjust and create them, and he's just recreated his parents for the purpose of avoiding capture from the police. Um, his parents come to get him, but he literally just created them out of thin air and then wafted them away because his parents were killed when he was younger. So he said he kind of conjures them up every now and again when he's feeling sad or scared or lonely um, and then when he needs them. And it's, it's interesting because... I know I'm just going to keep saying it. It's not what I was thinking this story was going to be about. Like, to be honest, up until I read it, I wasn't even certain this was about an alien hunter. I thought it was about a lad that had some sort of magical power, which obviously he does. 
but I didn't know it was about aliens. So that's quite interesting because it's kind of verging into the sci-fi and I've never really read a sci-fi. So reading like a, a middle grade YA sci-fi, I think would be quite a, an easy first step in. I mean, it's still a bit strange, but it's still an, an easy first step. So I'm going to roll with it and see how I do. So I am on the home stretch. I have about 60 pages left and I'm really enjoying it. Like at first it was weird because I didn't know it was a sci-fi book. So I was not prepared for it to go all sci-fi. And then once I got used to it, it was just really, really good. Um, not the best book I've ever read, but it was a very good book. I can see it being a four star, depending on the ending, if it's a bad ending, three star. But up to now, I'm really enjoying it. Like, I don't think a three star rating is that bad, really. So we'll just have to see. So I'm going to finish it. Chances are the next time I talk to you will be when I finish it. And I'm determined now, because I'm on the last 60 pages, to finish it tonight. That way I can start with a new book, my final book for Books for the Brave, tomorrow. And I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, just thought I'd check in with you, let you know that I was very close to the end and I'm on a bit of a home stretch. And I will see you when I finished. Right. I've just finished Daniel X. And... Okay, this isn't about Daniel X, so if you don't care, tough. I've just hit my Goodreads goal. I have just finished my 50th book of the year. Like, that is amazing. Originally, my goal for the year was 24, because I thought two a month, that's probably standard. Last year, I read 10 books total, because I got into reading slumps and I couldn't be bothered reading. Or I was reading a book that was okay, but I just had other things to do, so I didn't bother. And I read roughly around 10 books total. And this year, since I started BookTube in January, it's been... It's been four and a half months. It's the 15th, is it, today? Let me just check. It's the 15th of May today, which means we're probably halfway through the month. So it's four and a half months officially, and I've just finished my 50th Now on to Daniel X. I thought this was a really good story. When I first started it, I was a bit weirded out. I was like, oh, this feels childish. It feels stupid. I'm not sure how I feel. Um, but I think I felt that way because it wasn't what I thought it would be. I didn't know it was going to be about an alien hunter, which sounds ridiculous because really I that's what the book is about. That's what the entire series is about. Daniel X is an alien hunter. But for me, I don't go into books with any sort of knowledge. I try and go in blind where I can. And I did not know he was an alien hunter. So it's quite a weird sci-fi book for me. Very odd. Uh, but once I got around that, once I got my head into it, it was really good. So it is time to pick my third book and pick my third path on the way to the bookkeeper's stronghold. So, in order to wake from my slumber, I had to vanquish the Wicked Witch by reading a book I was meant to read years ago. I did that, The Dangerous Days of Daniel X. Once you wake, you summon water to melt the witch. Which location do you want to travel to next? The Hundred Acre Wood or the Deep Woods? Ooh, I don't know. Where should we go, guys? I mean, I love the Hundred Acre Woods because it's Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is one of my all-time favourite Disney characters. Uh, the Deep Woods, I don't really know where the Deep Woods are. I'm going to Google it. Where are the Deep Woods? Who are the Deep Woods? Oh, I still have no idea where the Deep Woods are. But there's a fantasy novel called Beyond the Deep Woods. I'm going to assume it's that. Uh, personally, I feel as though because I have no knowledge of the Deep Woods, I should choose the Hundred Acre Wood. But I don't know, is that predictable? I don't want to be predictable, so going the Hundred Acre Wood seems like the obvious way to go for me. If I'm going on an adventure, I'd go the other way. So, where should I go, guys? Help me right now. I think, I think just to be a bit a bit cray cray I'm gonna go to the deep woods I feel like I'm gonna regret this but yeah I'm going to the deep woods so let's see what it says the trees have grown thick as you plunge into the deep woods noises surround you 
mist befalls you, and a fabled creature springs from the shadows and attempts to attack you. The only way to battle this foe is to read a book that was published before 2000. Well, crap. Right, let's get to it, guys. Okay, so for the prompt for In the Deep Woods, it is to read a book that was published before 2000. I really struggled. The only books I had that were published before 2000 that were middle grade were the first Harry Potter book, which I have a whole separate video series planned for Harry Potter, so I don't want to reread that as part of this because I have something else planned. Um, the first Lemony Snicket book, but again, whole other thing planned for them. So the only book I actually had which worked, and it's, it's The Magician's Nephew for The Chronicles of Narnia, which I'm happy to reread, to be perfectly honest, but my only issue is it, I've, I've read it. I've already read it. Um, I mean, to be fair, I read it my final year of uni, so 2018, so about two years ago. So Sorry, the camera's really wobbly. Um, so there's nothing wrong with a reread. I think I'm fairly happy for a reread. That's why I've chosen the first one, because really, if I've started it again, there is a good chance I can just continue. And yeah, there's no, no issue with reading it again. I just wanted to ideally read something I have not read before. So Magician's Nephew it is. <laughs> So I'll just, I'll just update you as and when I feel the need. I love the aggression from people in C.S. Lewis's day. Like, is that what the aggression was like in the 50s? Because the young boy Diggory has just said, because his uncle's tricked him into going to Narnia, he just said, By gum, don't I just wish I was big enough to punch your head? And I just think, if that was the level of insult in the 50s, I absolutely love it because that is amazing like in Manchester if someone was annoyed they'd say go knock your fucking head off mate but now it's literally like oh by gum don't say I just wish I was big enough to punch your head it's uh, why did I put on a British voice what's wrong with me it's literally 9am I'm so tired why am I awake but I find that really amusing and I just <laughs> I remembered why I like this book. I like the entire series because of the language like that. C.S. Lewis is a really, really good author. Considering this, like these books were written, I don't even know when they were written. This one was written in the 50s. Considering when these books were written, the writing style is still very modern, even though the language probably isn't. The writing sounds very modern and very easy to read. And I'm really, I love that. So I'm on board. I'm really struggling to read this book. Like, I'm currently on page 84. And it's not a case of I'm not enjoying it, because I am. But I think my issue is, I've already read this. And even though it was years ago, it was a book that I read. I think the entire series, I read the series and I was glad that I'd read it. But then that was it. I didn't want to do it again. Um, and really the only reason I kept to the series is because I got it as a gift. So I didn't feel as though I could really give it away. And I just, I'm not really interested in reading these again. Because I've definitely read them once now. And I think picking this up is really good because I've decided I definitely don't want to read them again. So I'm actually really struggling to actually get through. Finished. So it was okay. I'm going to give it a three star rating. I don't mind it. Don't love it. So, we have just completed our task of reading a book published before the year 2000. And I chose The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. So that completes my mission in the deep woods. Yes, you've done it. You've slain the beast. Hurry along, or who knows what else will approach you in the deep woods. Which location do you want to travel to next? The Broly Rail, or I Am Found, or the Black Ice Bridge? Oh, right, where do I want to go? Uh, I'm going to rule out Orion Found. I don't know what it is. I've looked on the map and it there's, there's a UFO. I have a feeling it's going to be very sci-fi related. I don't, I'm not really a sci-fi kind of person. Daniel X was a very big sci-fi though. So to be fair, I did enjoy that. But I'm not really feeling it. I feel as though Daniel X, had, that, that gave me my fill for my sci-fi. So looking at the map. Ooh, Okay. Looking at the map, we have the Broly Rail or the Black Ice Bridge. And 
I mean, surprisingly, the Black Ice Bridge looks quite boring. Um, but then again, the Blood Rally Rail looks fairly boring as well. I'm going to show you what the map looks like. Let's see. So, the Black Ice Bridge is from a book called Explorers on the Black Ice Bridge, which I've never heard of, but okay, I'm all for it. Whereas the Broly Rail is actually from a book called Nevermore. And Nevermore is actually very popular amongst middle grade readers. I have never read it, but quite a lot of people have picked up Nevermore for this Believeathon. So, I think I'm going to go with the Broly Rail just because of how popular Nevermore actually is. So, let's see what the prompt is. So we've gone with the Broly Rail. Buildings surround you, but you ignore them until you reach a chasm that can only be crossed using the Broly Rail. Except, you don't have a Broly. At the nearby hotel, a young girl offers you hers, but she won't trade easily. In order to gain the Broly, you must read a book featuring transportation, or that has transportation on the cover. Let's go on a journey guys, let's find a book. Right, so this Treasure Hunters, which I assume has a boat on the front cover, that'd be really good. I could easily do that. It's quite a chunker though, but it's possible. Ideally, I want a smaller book because I only have two days and I have two books left to go. Middle school, there's... Oh, I might have it. Let's see, is this... Is this... Yes! It's not the first book in the series though, which is a bit of an issue, but I can reread it. Middle school, how I got lost in London. There's a bus! I swear I chose to do vlogs at the very worst time. Like, if I was doing a normal vlog, I would literally vlog my experiences going out and about and doing things. And I chose to vlog when we're stuck inside. So, my vlog consists of me sitting on the couch, and then me sitting on the bed. And then for a bit of variety, I walk into the kitchen whilst I'm getting a drink and vlog. Right now, you've just seen me walking down the stairs. I don't even have a back garden, which is really crap. Like, I wish I did so I could just show you something different. <laughs> now you've done that, the magical girl gives you her brolly and wishes you luck. You step boldly towards the final location, the bookkeeper's stronghold. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Are your intentions free from greed? Remember to obey the quester's creed. Now take a step into the cold to save the bookkeeper's stronghold. Huzzah! You're almost at the final destination. The bookkeeper's stronghold is near, but you need to cross part of the snow sea to get there. You look around, but for miles and miles, all you see is snow. And as you squint, you notice it's shifting. Monsters. You were warned about these creatures. They're called leviathans, and they're terrifying. You have nowhere to run as they approach. That is, until you hear an approaching sleigh. The leviathans change course and head for it. They circle round to pick you up, and a song weaver on board manages to battle the monsters and protect you and the crew from a grisly fate. The crew introduces themselves and you ask them to take you to the bookkeeper's stronghold. They agree to take you, and it isn't long before you reach the gates. The entire place is protected by the witch, trapping everyone inside and keeping everyone out. You walk confidently to the gate, with all the knowledge and power you have gained from the stories you have read on your travels, and your moment has come. In order to save the stronghold and defeat the witch, you must read the next book in a series. So, I put a poll up on Instagram and asked people to vote for what I should do. It was a toss-up between... Jackie Ha Ha My Life is a Joke, which I started this entire readathon with, and I thought it'd be quite nice to start and end my journey on the same book series, or Daniel X2, because I have to get it done today, and it's a shorter book. So I just checked my Instagram poll, and the winner by a landslide is Jackie Ha Ha. So that's what we're going to go with. So let's go get the book. Here it is. So if you've watched this entire vlog in one sitting, thank you. Uh, but you will also know the story of what Jackie Ha Ha One was about. If you started it, got bored, left, and then come back, 
Well, that's your own fault. You can go back and find out what Jackie Ha Ha One was about. So, to give you a quick synopsis of number two, because I've already started now. It's summertime on the shore, and it's all about having fun, fun, fun. With my starring role in the boardwalk's biggest blockbuster, a life of fame and fortune is finally on my horizon. Until I accidentally do a really awful, terrible thing that ruins everything. My problems can't always be laughed away, but I sure am going to try. After all, they didn't nickname me Jackie Ha Ha for nothing. So I finally reached page 100. My God, that was a struggle. What is wrong with me today? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not with it. I'm not best pleased. I really wanted to be with it and get through it and end on a really high note. And at the moment, I'm just... I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it. Uh, the book is really good, actually. So, you know, it could be worse, could be reading a bad book. But the book is really good. It's a nice continuation for Jackie Ha Ha. It's still funny. A lot less comedy, which is quite strange. Uh, but I'm really enjoying it. It's a very good book, a very good, at the moment, four-star book. Um... The thing with the first book, which I absolutely loved, was how it dealt with the hard-hitting issues. And there's not really that many hard-hitting issues that have appeared so far. There's been one, and it's just appeared recently, and it's really annoyed me about race. And it really annoyed me. Um, because I'm, I'm not going to look and find the extract, because I don't really know where it is, so I'd be looking for a while. Uh, basically... Some posh snooty man's just come out of an audition for a Shakespeare play and Jackie's best friend wanted to audition and the guy just said, why are you even here? In Shakespeare's day, black people were not allowed on stage so you wouldn't be cast. Oh, that angered me. Um, so it's dealing with issues like race and I love that. I love that it's dealing with them issues because that's what we need, especially in middle grade books where young children are reading them, you need to deal with these issues. And I love it. And that that was already, no matter how angry it made me, it was the highlight of me reading this book so far because we need them issues. And the fact that they are being tackled in this book is amazing. So I hope things like that continue. Right now, I would say it's a good four star book. Um... I'm still loving it. I don't. I always feel bad saying I like it less than the first book, because it's not like I'm. I'm not liking it less. I'm not thinking it's bad, but the first book was just so unexpected for me. Like it was so so good, and plus it then dealt with a lot of these issues. And this book hasn't done that yet. If it does that, no doubt my rating will go up. But we'll see. Really enjoying it. Um, I'm gonna take a break because I don't want to. I'm going to take a break because I don't want to force myself to keep reading when I'm not feeling it. So I'm going to take a short break, put my tea in the oven, watch some TV and chill. And then by the time my tea is finished and I've eaten, the show will be finished and I can move on to the next hundred pages. I'm determined to get it done tonight. I am. Just kind of convincing myself, but I am. So I will catch up with you Probably just before I, st I'll catch up with you just before I start reading the next 100 and just give you a bit of an update on how I'm feeling. So I'll see you then. So I hit page 200. Not really much to report. Book is still very good. The racist has been kicked out and dealt with now. So I'm very glad that they dealt with that issue. And I'm very glad that the issue was in there in the first place. Um, they're still dealing with elements of war, which I think is really lovely. Uh yeah, it's great. So I'm going to continue. So I have finished Jackie Ha Ha number two. My life is a joke. I really love this. I thought it was great. It dealt with some really good issues. It dealt with racism. It dealt with uh, criminal acts. It dealt with being the child of someone who is in a war. It was really good. It dealt with a lot, but it didn't lose any humour. And I love that. I love that it didn't do that. I think I'm going to give this one a four star out of five because I just feel as though the first book had so much emotion wrapped in it like losing a grandparent and fears over absent parents and parents in wars it dealt with a lot that first book and this book it didn't really it dealt with a lot but not as much and it didn't have that 
emotional impact that the first book had. This is still really good. It's not in any way less good than the first book. I feel as though I need to make that clear. It's just equally as good, but the first one had a lot more emotional impact for me. So, four star out of five, excellent book. And that is it. I have, <laughs> I have officially finished Believe-a-thon. All I need to do now is go and read what happens after I've finished battling the witch. And I'm finished, so let's go to that. Once complete, journey will be you done. find yourself transported inside the stronghold now that you have been able to penetrate its defences. The witch, enraged, tries to banish you, but you're much too powerful now. With all the strength and courage you can muster, you finally defeat her. The curse has been lifted and the people of the bookkeeper's stronghold have been freed. From outside, the stranger who sent you on the quest approaches you and thanks you greatly. He reveals himself. It's Gav of the Bookkeeper Stronghold. You have saved his stronghold, and in doing so, you have restored imagination in the land of Make Believeathon. The end. So that was it. I did it. I got straight into it, right from the poacher's pocket in, all the way through to the Bookkeeper Stronghold. We went on quite a journey. And I thought it was really fun because I didn't know any of the prompts earlier. I literally chose based on where I fancied going, just based off the names. And I thought that was really interesting. So we started at the Poacher's Pocket Inn, where I read Jackie Ha Ha. Then we followed straight up to the Yellow Brick Road, where... What did we read at the Yellow Brick Road? We read Daniel X, or The Dangerous Days of Daniel X. What was the prompts for the Yellow Brick Road? Oof, that was days ago. Uh, a book you should have read years ago and then after that we went into the deep woods where I read The Magician's Nephew as a book that was published before the year 2000 then after that we then went up to the Brolly Rail where we read a book that has transportation on the cover and that was Middle School How I Got Lost in London which had a double decker bus Finally, we came right up to the Bookkeeper Stronghold and read the next book in the series, which was Jackie Ha Ha 2, My Life is a Joke, and defeated the witch and saved the land of make believe -a So thank you so much for joining me on this quest. You have no idea how much fun this was, and you have no idea how grateful I am that you have stuck with me along this ride. So thank you so much. I cannot wait for believe 3, which has now been announced, and I'm really looking forward to November. So... Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to drop comments down below because I always love getting comments. I reply to all of them. Um, and make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell to always get notified. So that is it from me. I post every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday and then intermittently throughout the week. And until next time, I will see you later.